This is my favorite little programmer, the Picket 2. I use it to program little 8-bit microcontrollers. In fact, this thing's open source, so I was able to design my own and make my own 3D printed case. I'll show all that in this video. But some will say, why not just use an Arduino Uno? Well, there's a difference between bootloader and programmer. I'll explain it all on today's Film of Friday. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. In the early days of 3D printing, 3D printers were known as RepRap machines or Rapid Replicating Prototype Machines because you would use a 3D printer to print the pieces to make the next 3D printer. And now the Prusa printers are probably the closest thing we've got to that because there's still a lot of pieces that are printed on a Prusa machine and built into the new machine that they sell. So this is the closest we have to a RepRap machine. In electronics, this is an example of RepRap. This is the Picket 2 programmer for programming 8-bit microcontrollers. This thing's been around since the early 2000s, but it's open source, and inside it's got an 8-bit microcontroller that controls it. So because it's open source, I was able to build my own. Many years ago, I built my own because this was being discontinued, and I wanted to keep the design around. So I made my own, but that microcontroller inside needed to be programmed to make this work. How do you do that? With a Picket 2. You can program the microcontroller right here with a Picket 2. So it took a Picket 2 to make a Picket 2. Rep rep. Now the Picket 2 also came in a starter kit that included a development board. So it made it easy to get started and I used it in many of my beginner's guide to embedded C books. Now I also wrote a book on Arduino. An Arduino doesn't require a hardware programmer. Well actually it kind of does. See Arduino is another example of rep rep. It relies on a bootloader chip. The bootloader inside, it's a program inside that programs itself. Well, you can buy that microcontroller already programmed with the bootloader in it. Or you can save some money and buy a blank microcontroller, but then you got to load the bootloader into that blank microcontroller. Well, in that case, an Arduino module can become a hardware programmer, and it can be used to program the bootloader into that blank chip. And then you build that blank chip into an Arduino module, and now Arduino made another Arduino, or RepRap. Now, in order to program the microcontroller on an Arduino, you need a circuit that will convert USB from the computer into serial communication that communicates with the bootloader. So there's a whole circuit on the Arduino Uno used to program the microcontroller. So this is added to every module. Now, I can add a bootloader to just about any microcontroller that I use, but I'm still going to need a USB to serial converter module. So that just adds hardware and adds cost that I don't want to do. So that's where the Picket 2 programmer comes in. I can program the microcontroller directly and still use low-cost microcontrollers instead of a bootloader chip. And if I have one Picket 2 programmer, I can connect it to a lot of different development boards, even ones that I designed myself, and program the microcontroller right on the board. And I can program a lot of different microcontrollers. There's hundreds and hundreds of them supported by Picket 2, from small 8-pin all the way up to 40-pin. And it's a lot cheaper than buying bootloader chips, and also cheaper than paying for the USB to serial circuitry that's on every Arduino module. Now some would say, why worry about these little 8-bit microcontrollers when you can use a 32-bit module like a Pi Pico or a Microbit or an ESP32 or there's several other modules that you can use. Well, if you've ever controlled a serial LCD like I2C to an LCD display, you'll find that the back of it has a little microcontroller. So by knowing how to program these things, you can make your own interface modules. So you can make things like for robotics, you could do obstacle detection with a custom micro or a custom servo controller or a custom dot matrix display or even NeoPixels, all handled outside the 32-bit module. And once you've done this, your 32-bit code gets a lot easier to develop and even debug. And once you've got these little smart modules, you can use them in other designs or even possibly sell them to other people. Now there's a few extra features that I like about the PIC kit too. When I'm connected to a development board, I can control the Picket 2 from its own standalone software. And from there, I can change EEPROM memory, I can change program memory, I can change an individual byte if I want to. Now, also built into the Picket 2 software is a UR tool and a logic tool. Now, the UR tool is just like the serial terminal in Arduino. So I can communicate back and forth serially through 
the picket too. And it shows the connections, how I would do that, the transmit and receive pins. And then I can actually take what I have and send it as a .csv file so I can open it and manipulate it with Excel or something similar. The other tool I like is the logic analyzer. Now this is like a very simple logic analyzer or oscilloscope really with the same connections to pick it to connections. I can measure waveforms. I have cursors so I can measure pulse width. I can measure frequency. I can zoom into it. Now it's limited in frequency, but it's incredibly handy when you're debugging a circuit. Now in the early days of Picket 2, it was more popular than Arduino, but unfortunately it got discontinued. But it was open source, so all the documentation is still available to download, including the schematic for this thing and the software is available. So you can get all that and make your own. In fact, years ago I made a website where I showed you how to build your own Picket 2 based on my design, which is a simplified schematic, and I have a board layout for it. And from there I got boards made by PCBWay.com. All you need to do is go to their Gerber viewer and upload your Gerber files. And once you've got that, it'll bring the board in and you can look at the top and bottom. You can even change features like solder mask color to see how it looks in red. And then once you've got that, go click on instant PCB quote and it'll take you to the order form. And here's where you can change the quantity. Go with a minimum of 10, it's the same price. And then you can change your solder mask or your silk screen and it'll give you a quote right up here in the corner. So 10 boards, five bucks, 1998 shipping. So 2498, I get 10 boards ready to go. So check out PCBWay.com. They even have assembly services. And here's my fully assembled version of the Picket 2. Now I did have to program the microcontroller using the other Picket 2, but now I can use it with all my same development boards. And I even took the design and built it into a Chapino board to combine the two into one module. And you don't have to build it anymore. You can buy a clone pretty much anywhere. I see them on Amazon.com for about $32. I've seen them on eBay, sometimes for less, sometimes for more. And I found them at AliExpress and other places as well. Now I designed mine with through hole components, so that way maybe someday it could be a learn to solder kit. Also years ago I made a really ugly 3D printed case for it, so I want to make a new one for that right now. I have this logic analyzer and I like the looks of the box and I've always liked the look of the Apple TV box. So I wanted to do that with my design. So then I took my assembled Picket 2 clone, I measured its width, its length, and its height. And then there's two LEDs poking up and I made this box. And this is a whole box because it'll take away material. And I made the box that I really wanted the case to look like and grouped it all together. So now I had space to put the Picket 2 programmer, the LEDs to poke through, and when assembled it would look something like this, only it'll be my actual board. Now I did put lettering on it, but that's going to be for another project. I'll show you. I just used a marker to fill it in. But I like the way this looks, and then I added holes for screws in the bottom so I could screw this thing together, and then I was ready to go. Now many project boxes for electronics are made out of ABS, so I want to print in the same material. And for this I'm going to use the FlashForge Adventure 5M Pro because it's got a circulation system that circulates the air really well, so I don't smell the fumes when I use this. So it's become my preferred ABS printer. And I like the bed material and it holds really well so I don't get warping. So let's try it on this and see how it turns out. I'm using Orca Slicer to create the G-code file at a 0.2 layer height and a 15% infill. And it says it should take almost 49 minutes to print this. Not bad at all. You can see I've cut out the letters a little bit for the Picket 2, but this isn't a two color printer, so I'm just doing it in one color. And no warping. It came out really nice. And it's a textured surface, so it's got a texture on the top and bottom. And then I just used a simple marker to mark out the picket too. I'm being lazy. I'm not doing two color printing, but it fit nicely. It snaps right into the base and then the top goes right over it and it lines up with the LEDs. And then I just used four M4 by 12 millimeter screws. And I didn't use inserts. It just screws right into the plastic and I'm not going to be taking this apart over and over again. So it worked fine. I could tighten these right up. It didn't split the plastic. Everything was good. And here's the final design with the board inside. This looks so much better than a bare circuit board, but it works just as well. And here it is connected to a Chapino module with a demo shield on top and a wire jumper that I'll show you why in a second. 
Here's a quick GC basic code sample where I light the LED for one millisecond and then wait nine milliseconds to light it again. Now here it is programming. You see the red LED come on, so it's programming the board. And then the software will indicate that programming was successful and it's ready to run. And here it is running. It's flashing so fast you almost can't see it. But I have a jumper going from the LED pin to the connector of the Picket 2. And so then I can open up the logic tool or the logic analyzer and then I'll see the waveform. You can see the one millisecond pulse LED on, nine milliseconds LED off. And with the cursors, I can verify it. Now it says 1.1 milliseconds is how long it's on. And I position the X cursor and Y cursor at the end of the LED lit and the next one lighting. And so you can see Y minus X is nine milliseconds. So nine milliseconds off, just like the code told it to do. So did I need to design my own picket too? No, but I love it when I can design electronics, make my own circuit boards and design my own case and 3D print it. So I make my own product instead of just buying one. And I don't always have to use it as a programmer. I can connect the cable to any module and use it as a logic analyzer or a serial terminal. So this is actually a really handy tool. I wanna to give a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters and my thanks members. I could not make these videos without your support. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way, or a membership at Thangs.com. And if nothing else, click on the logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Chuck Hellebuck's Electronic Products and Filament Friday.